Alrighty, so before the U.S. take on Granada in the first CONCACAF Nations League that the U.S. men's national team is about to embark on, we're going to do a preview of the remaining MLS game that's going to be happening in the June international break. Remember, not every single team played during the June international break, and we don't get full slate of MLS action returning until the June 18th uh, weekend and June 19th. But in terms of this preview, we're not only just going to look at the free games that's going to be happening this weekend, but also the two remaining game in terms of the middle of the week which means that this gets a little bit tricky where you know some of the these game especially in the midweek you know i mentioned players that is on international duty and how i think the international break doesn't end until next week and i don't know if some of the, these players that is on international du duty are still going to be on international duty once these midweek game is again most likely that's going to be the case because i did say say that you know the the international break i don't think is going to be over until uh in a couple of days in in the middle of next week but uh i also want to just say that you know in terms of all these players that i put on the players on international d duty it comes from the league website and i've mentioned before how many times the league website sometimes can be wrong in terms of listing wrong players on on international duty so if i did make a mistake on that let me know in the comments below and we're also going to have a a situation here where one of the team is actually going to be featured twice in this preview which i think this is one of the rare time that that of course is going to happen and we'll mention which team that is but first let us actually begin with the first game which is shard fc versus the new york rebels which will start at 3 p.m eastern 12 p.m pacific but the actual kickoff is 308 p.m lo local time as this game is going to be on abc in fact all three of these game that's going to be happening on the weekend is going to be on national television with two of them being on abc and unfortunately one of them has to be on twitter and it just happened to be that game has to be involved one of my team but uh in terms of this one itself you know shard have a 5-1 and 8 record and the red bulls have a 6-5 and 3 record this is the first ever meeting between both of these teams as it is pretty much still the case whenever shard take take on a t team in the eastern conference especially taking on a team in the Western Conference, but player on international duty, you got Alan Franco, uh, Yasivek, uh, Christian McCoon, and Kale Shredetsky still out on international duty for Charlotte. For the Red Bulls, you got Christian Castros Jr. and Aaron Long not available in this game. And what I'm very interested about this game is how Charlotte FC would look now that they're playing their first game uh, under life without Miguel Angel Ramirez. And that you know we've spent a couple of weeks now talk about the the controversy that's going on in terms of that firing but now it seems like maybe the dust has settled it's going to be interesting to see how this team is going to go i mean i'm going to assume that this team should be be fine in the first couple of games because you know there is that thing called new coach boost and that you know i'm pretty sure a lot of these players will definitely play play very very hard even though uh, miguel angel ramirez is no longer uh with this team and that yeah this is going to be, be a tough game for the red bulls who you know i know this season they've been kind of the kings of all of the road with them winning so many road game and i talked about how they had that 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 re record of tying for the most consecutive wins on the road to start the the season but yeah we'll see whether they can of course can continue that uh against a team that don't usually lose at home very often now moving on in terms of the next game is nashville sc versus the san jose earthquake so this game will start at 8 p.m eastern 5 p.m pacific but the actual kickoff is 7 8 p.m local time as i mentioned unfortunately this is going to be be on twitter i mean even games that's not on that's doing international break has to be be on twitter like i would assume maybe 2d and it might be bu busy in terms of sho showing mexican national team matches instead of just showing an mls game once again but nope apparently this game they had enough time to show an MLS game on Saturday, and like I said, that's going to be the case in this one. Nashville coming into this game with 6-4-4 four, and four record, while the Quakes 3-5-6 and six coming into this game, and they're in the midst of a second of a three-game road trip and a second of a very tough three-game road trip where the next opponent that they're going to be facing is against all. RSL, which is one of the teams that is near the top of the standings. All-time meeting. Uh, there's only one prior meeting between both of these teams. Uh, both of these teams met earlier this season in San Jose. It was a 2-2 draw between both of these teams. And players on international duty for Nashville. Uh, two key players that is out in Anabogo Doi and Walker Zimmerman. But for the Quakes, they don't have Usani 
Buda, Francesco Calvo, uh, Marcus Lopez, and Jameer Montero. And, you know, though some of those those players that the Quakes are going to lose are big, but at least the good news is no Cal Calvo in this game. And I know I've been been maybe a little bit harsh on Calvo at times because, you know, he he, he, he isn't as bad as what what's, what I always talk about, how, how he hasn't. He hasn't been 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 doing well this season, and then especially you know I talk about the stats chart of how how shocking the fact that he's actually leads the league in in terms of inter interception so far this season. But yeah, you know one big loss that the Quakes will not will will have in this game is Jamero Montero, who really has heat, heated up for the Quakes at least in these last couple of weeks, and that's going to be a bit of a loss in terms of of this attack that has definitely been a very le lethal attack in these last couple of games, but. It's not going to be easy when they do face against a Nashville SC side that, you know, I'm pretty sure their defense is going to be be definitely a little weakened because Walker Zimmerman is not going to be be there and that, you know, I'm pretty sure that back line really feeds off of him. But still, it's going to be a very organized Nashville team and you know Nashville want to get, get wins at home because, you know, so far, I wouldn't say they have struggled in terms of getting wins at home. I mean, they had got wins at home. But they also have already, they suffered two draws this season and that, you know, already early signs. This has started to kind of feel feel like similar to last season where this is a Nashville team that they know that they can get wins on, on the road. But when it comes to home form, you know, they, last year in terms of home form, it hasn't been, it wasn't bad whatsoever. They didn't lose a lot of game, but they draw a lot of games. And when you draw points at home, it can definitely definitely be be a problem and certainly for Nashville if they want to have some aspiration of potentially climbing higher up in the standings I mean right now they're they're in a pretty respectable place in sixth place in the west but they know that they 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 can do much better than this and as I mentioned you know with so many home games for the remaining of the season they need to take advantage of these home games and especially playing against a weak team like like the the Quakes uh you would think that they they want nothing but three points in this game if they want to continue their climb up the Western Conference table. But now moving on in terms of the next match to a team that is looking to get out of the bottom of the e the Western Conference. And I, I can't, I still can't believe I'm saying this about Sporting KC. Like this has just been a disastrous season for Sporting KC. And, you know, as I mentioned, they're now dead last in the Western Conference and not only dead last, but play the most game out of any team. So, you know, even if they want to get out of the bottom of the Western Conference, they need to make sure win some of their games and also hope that teams don't use that game advantage to separate from them but coming into this game they have a 3-4 and 8 record while new england has a 4-4 and 5 record and the refs slowly climbing out out of the near the bottom of the eastern conference after such a slow start to the season largely due to the the ccl kind of hangover that they they suffer uh, for throughout the season but this game of course will be happening on sunday at 3 p.m eastern 12 p.m pacific but the actual kickoff is 308 p.m local time and this game is going to also be on abc all-time meeting it was sporting casey have a slight advantage 26 12 and 19 uh by the way you know since this is an interconference matchup and i mentioned so many interconference matchup has not happened since 2019 this is one of them but the last time both of these teams face off against each other my oh my, this was a barn burner. Like the final score of this game was 4-4-4 four, four, four in this one. And I don't expect that's going to be the same score, especially with the way that neither of these attack has been really good. And especially, this is also the first game where New England is not going to have Adam Book saw so their, their, their Talis number 9 in, in this game after he, he of course, was sold to RC Lons. I'm going to be interesting to see who, of course, will step up on the attack for this refs team. But in terms of players that is on international duty, you got Murray on the zone list and Daniel Sharley not available for Sporting KC and for New England. Only player that is going to be missing is Matt Turner, but that's definitely a big, big miss, especially with how, how good Matt Tur Turner is for this refs team. Though, you know, that's going to be something that the refs are going to have to get used to because we know Matt Turner's time with the New England Revolution is going to come to a close. In fact, I think it's going to be starting like they maybe only have like like a couple of games left with Matt Turner before, you know, uh, one of the guys that they, they, they signed, which I think it's that Serbian guy. I forgot what, what was his name. I think his name's like Petrovic, something like that. I'm interested to see whether if he gets his, his debut in this one, because you know, the, the revs, when they decide to go for a goalkeeper and that they mentioned, this guy is probably going to be the replacement. And so far he hasn't really made his debut because Matt Turner is still here, but I feel like this could 
be the chance and that you know we're gonna see how, how good he, he's going to be because you know I think you could also say there may be some pressure for him to perform well because they trust that he is going to be the guy that I wouldn't say just completely replace Matt Turner because you know it, replacing Matt Turner is almost impossible for the rest but at least have that similar qual quality uh, of it and able to make some big big save uh like what Matt Turner has done during his his time with the refs yeah there's going to be some big expectation for him and it's going to be interesting to see whether he does get his his first start especially with Matt Turner not not being with the refs and currently still with the U.S. men's national team now moving on in terms of the next match we got the Seattle Sounders versus the Vancouver Whitecaps so the, these game on the top are the weekend game and these game on the bottom are the the remaining midweek game so kind of perfectly balanced of how I I structure it but this game will happen on Tuesday and this game actually will kick off 30 minutes after the game between the US and El Salvador is going to to happen so yeah it's gonna be kind of fun for me me to watch uh, both both the the U, this US second nations league game and also this at the same time and you know that most likely you know when I do do the review of both of those game on Tuesday you know that the US versus El Salvador game I'm gonna have more notes compare to that one because you know I'm gonna be paying a little bit more attention to, to that one I mean it's nothing against this game but you you know in terms of these nations league game and especially you know we're still having so much talk in terms of how this US men's national team roster is going to look like heading into Qatar in November and that these nations league game are ones to you Used to kind of maybe get get a measuring stick in terms of how they're going to prepare themselves to in competitive kind of competition. Yeah, you you know I, I will be be paying a lot more attention to that game. But that being said, this game is also interesting too because both of these teams are actually really hot, hot coming into to this one. Two of the hottest team in the Western Conference. I mean, Vancouver has just been kind of on on a Vanny Sertini kind of wave like they did near the end of the season. Ever since they they gone start the season winless they have now got themselves with a 5-2-7 and seven record and has risen all the way up to i believe 10th place in the western conference while seattle of course they're still in the the beginning stage of a very predictable second half resurgence and they're also been red hot with the way that they're now climb up to i believe 11th but they're they do have some games in hand and if they do win those game in hand they would actually be above the red line but they have a record of 5-1-6 and six. uh this is going to be a late one 10 30 p.m eastern 7 30 p.m pacific but the actual kickoff is 7 38 p.m local time uh the sounders does have a slight advantage 17 10 and 7 over the whitecaps but one thing that the sounders will not have an advantage is the players that is going to be missing due to international duty and that it feels like this could maybe be like a tacoma defiance team again against the vancouver whitecaps heck you know they play kind of a tacoma defiance team last year against the Whitecaps and they won 4-1 in that one so I feel like maybe Brian Schmitz is going to be confident that he's going to rely on these Tacoma Defiance player again and especially Tacoma Defiance is actually doing very well this season in the MLS Next Pro I think we might see a couple of guys that that is on that team that could be in this one because with the way that you look at some of the players on international duty these are these are very main stable player of the Sounders team guys like Ariaga, Jordan Morris, Christian Rodin, Alp Rushnek and knew who all unavailable in this game for the Sounders. Well, for the Whitecaps, you got J Bikel, uh, Javine Brown, uh, Andres Kuvas, and Lucas Cavallini unavailable for the Vancouver Whitecaps. And by the way, uh, the Whitecaps, as I'll talk about New England next, because, uh, spoiler alert, New England is that team that unfortunately have to play tw twice uh, in ter terms of of uh, the these these next couple of days and that they're, they're one of the few teams that I, I'm men twice in a, a preview the Whitecaps are also playing their second game during the international duty and you know how I said before how teams already already hate the fact that they play on international duty because it feels very unfair that they're gonna have to play against a weak team uh, in a competitive MLS game well I think the Whitecaps are gonna be angry once again the fact that this is the second time we have to do to do this I mean the first time we were relatively successful able to get the win at home but now have to do do it on the road against a Sounders team that well it's not going to be the strongest Sounders team you know it's not going to be be easy for the Whitecaps to try trying to go to Lumensfield and get get a resort I mean it's been a long time since they've been able to to do so and we'll see whether if this is going to be the time or will the Sounders who again you know they they I wouldn't say they haven't been playing great lately but they still have been able to find ways to to get reserved despite not being good and that could be be as dangerous of a, a 
any ways to win, then you are playing good and of course winning games because you all if you are always able to find ways to win at the end of the game, you know you are a very good team. But now moving on into the last game in terms of the remaining games that's going to be happening during the June international break in the remaining MLS game is the New England Revolution versus Orlando City. As I mentioned, the refs are Reds are a team that I'm mentioning the second time in this preview, and by then they will not have have this record of four, four, and five. While Orlando City will have the record of six, three, and five coming into this game, as this one will be a 7:30 p.m. Eastern, 4:30 p.m. Pacific start, but the actual kickoff is 7:38 p.m. local time. All time meeting, the Reds does have a six, six, and three record over Orlando, but player on international duty uh, in this game, as I mentioned, for the Reds, they will still not have Matt Turner in this one because. Most likely, he's going to be with the U.S. men's national team and probably maybe starting in that game against El Salvador. And then for Orlando, they they also won't have their goalkeeper too, Pedro Galese, with Peru. Uh, and then you also got J Mendes and, and Rivera not available for Orlando City in this game. And again, the difficult part about talking about teams twice in a preview is you don't know exactly what kind of situation they could be in. And especially how tight the Eastern Conference is, especially uh, ar around the, the playoff line. You know, it could be different where the refs could actually find them themselves above the red line because I think they're only like two points uh, below the red line. And because majority of the team in the East don't play, play this weekend, they can actually jump leapfrog a lot of team coming in to, to this one. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's tough to kind of talk about the situation the Rebs could find themselves in and that, that you know, they're going to be playing against an Orlando team that, you know, if the pattern goes goes right as it is the case this season, you would say that this could be a win for them because, like I said, it's weird that this team has this very strange pattern where they win, draw, lose, win, draw, and lose. And, you know, they did came off a loss last time. So, by rule, maybe they get a win in, in this one. And plus the fact that they also have been very good so far or on the road so yeah they could they could maybe get get something out of this one against a revs team that again you know they could be fighting for to try to get themselves above the red line if they can get a resort in in that road game against sporting kc but there you have it that is pretty much it for the preview of all five of these games that is going to be the remaining mls game during the june international break again you know it, it, it kind of sucks if you are one of these teams that is playing during this time because, you know, I mentioned some of the key players that they, they of course, are, are, are missing in some of these competitive games. But that's just how MLS is and that, you know, we'll have a discussion another another day talk about why uh, the MLS should think about finding a way where they prevent this, this to ha happen um, from ever uh, again. I mean, I don't think it will ever ha happen because of how... How, how tight the schedule is and especially in the future when there's going to be more more competitive games that's going to be happening and that thing called the league cup is going to to happen in july next year yeah i, I think it's almost impossible for for mls to try and to to have games that not happening on international break but at least the good news is is that i feel like this season there has been fewer games that is going to be happening during the international break and again that's that's good, the fact that MLS have started to realize that, yeah, they're, they're going to try their best to, to create a schedule where not every single team gets gets to have to face the pain of playing games during international break. But for now, uh, you know, certainly my condolence toward all these teams that have to do so, especially for a couple that have to do it twice so far during this international break. But either way, let me know in the comments below what do you think of five of these games, and also let me know in the comments below your prediction in terms of all five of these games. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you guys see a like, smash the subscribe button, and yeah, I, of course, will see you guys next time.